I was born on February 27th, 2002 in Long Beach, California. As if being granted the gift of life wasn't good enough, the Lord decided to bless me even more by giving me to the right family. My dad grew up in Lakewood, California, just outside Long Beach, and my mom was born in Thousand Oaks, California. I would say in all, my family is very versatile when it comes to birthplaces and lifestyles. My grandpa on my dad's side of the family came from a farm in upstate New York and around the year 1898 came to Long Beach, California, where my grandpa was born. My grandma, on the other hand, grew up on a small ranch in Cherokee, Iowa. In search of a new life that didn't revolve around crops and cattle, my grandma and her mom came to California in 1941. Needless to say, I grew up with relatives that came from all kinds of different places, and with that came all different kinds of ways that I grew up living by. Some of these include the desire to work and never quit until the job gets done, as well as being a provider for our family and our friends through hunting and fishing, and most importantly, having faith and believing in our Lord and Savior. Even when I was very little, I felt to an extent I had my life planned out from beginning to end. But this being said, I've always been a very realistic person, even at such a young age. Unlike most kids, my dreams did not consist of big, extravagant things, at least not to most. I did not want to be in the MLB or be some famous movie star that lived in the city with a bunch of people. I envisioned a more simplistic life that consisted of being a place where I don't have to drive to the grocery store to get my own food but rather have the ability to hunt my own food, while teaching loved ones the importance of caring for the earth and the wildlife that inhabit it. Over the years, I have learned that most of us have dreams and goals for the future. However, making those dreams a reality, in my opinion, demand two things. The first one stands beside a quote my grandpa used to tell me, is that there are two different people in this world. One is a man who watches others excel, and the other is the man who is the one that others are watching. In other words, there are watchers and there are doers. I believe in order to achieve what you set out to do, you must be a doer. The second requirement that I feel is crucial is that you must have faith in someone or something, even when times are tough. We are all human, and like a wave at sea, we all have our ups and downs. I know many people that have hit a low point in their life and have quit or have given up on what they set out to do because of it. However, in many cases, I do believe that if they had faith in both the Lord and themselves, that they would have been able to recuperate from their losses and would have walked away stronger because of it. As my learning of this concept was progressing, I found that a dream does not have to be an ending result and that someone could be living one dream while heading on the path towards the next. This started to become more apparent to me when I began to take archery and my hunting a little more serious in my life. I shot my very first archery tournament almost two years ago right on Chino, California. And as hard as it is for me to say, I got demolished time and time again by the opposing competition. This failure allowed me to see a new path blazed before me that presented all new challenges. Me losing felt personal, like it was a permanent fate. However, I had motivation and a plan that said otherwise. As a result, I bit down and began to go to work, doing everything I could to hone my skills and perfect my craft. With work, faith, and keeping my grandpa's quote in the back of my mind, I later began to succeed. What were once mounds are not hills, and what were once feared opponents are not amateur shooters. I now no longer doubt where my arrows will fly, and as a byproduct, I was ranked the number one indoor shooter for the entire state of California this last year. This new achievement has now allowed me to set my sights on all new horizons I thought I would never reach, and has taught me the importance of never giving up no matter how far you may have fallen. It's because of this experience that I know that no target in life is ever too far for me to hit. And I know that if I hold the same values that I currently hold today, that I will prevail in the woods, on the shooting platform, and in life. I know many people in this world have someone they idolize, like a religious figure, a famous athlete, or even some celebrity. Regardless of who or what it is, the main focus about them is that they are or represent someone who you aspire to be or live by. However, unlike some, I did not limit myself to one person, mainly because many people have played a role or impacted my life in one way, shape, or form. Some more than others, but regardless of how much they might have done, 
They all have taught their own lessons and have contributed to making the person I am today. Although many people come to mind when I think about this topic, the first people that come to thought are my parents. Over the years, they both have taught me many things regarding life and the secrets it holds. However, words of wisdom never seemed to be served to me on a silver platter. Instead, I always felt like more they were buried underground, and it was up to me to find a shovel and laboriously dig them up. However, once I dug deep enough, I found that I had a great appreciation for how well they both stuck together and how they always found God's grace in every mistake they made. Like my parents, my grandpa seemed to hold the same never quit until the job is done kind of attitude. Being that my grandpa at his age is very limited to what he can do, a lot of the adventures, hunts, and other extravagant places I go are some things he can no longer take part in. But in some ways, I always feel like this gives me motivation. When I'm at an archery tournament, I act like he's in the stands or in the field watching, or that he's in that deer hunting blind with me while I'm on a hunt. As funny as it might sound, I catch myself from time to time talking and asking him questions about hunts I previously did, thinking from habit that he was right there with me. As sad as it could be at times, he is always the very first person I call when I'm on a hunt or I'm at a tournament. Rather I succeed or fail at what it is I'm doing, he is always interested and dedicated to knowing what is going on and how it is going. For things even as simple as a hard day's work or a day at school, his interest in my life is what gives me motivation to work hard all day, every day, in an attempt to make him proud. Although he has greatly inspired my work ethic, I feel that his greatest message, whether he knows it or not, is that he has shown me how far a little bit of love can go and how large of an effect it could have on someone. We all live our lives day by day in some sort of order or fashion that we desire. But this being said, we all have our own thoughts and ideas for how we believe our lives should be lived and managed. As you would expect, the answers of people in most cases will vary depending on the topic. What this shows to me is that people are different. Rather it is your looks, ethnicity, or even religion, we are all different. And the way we look upon the world and the way we see out into certain situations will determine who we are and what we stand for. In others' perspectives, some of the values you might hold might be good things, however others, they might see bad. I find that when it comes to my bad sides, or in other words, my flaws in life, I tend to be my biggest critic. One example of this would be me shooting a near-perfect score in an archery shoot and being disgusted with myself for the slight imperfections that I might have allowed to happen. Although having a want to achieve perfection is not necessarily a bad thing, to me, expecting perfection is. I find this as being one of my shortcomings because of the added pressure I choose to bring upon myself, which in some cases has also dragged me and my abilities down from time to time as well. Because of the many places I've been and the people I've encountered so far in my life, I feel it is safe to say that even at 16, I have been around a time or two. Some of the things I have learned I feel come with the territory they originated from. It's because of this that every hunt, fishing trip, and archery shoot I do, I always have some lesson or thought to take back home with me. As sad as it makes me, I know most will never see what I've seen or hear what I've heard, but instead will get little fragments of it through pictures and discussions that might come up. My grandpa of 88 years has always said that you have been blessed to experience what you've witnessed. And like Jesus' disciple, your contribution is to tell those of it, hoping it can make an impact on them the way it has on you. That right there is something he has learned after all the adventures he has been on, and seems to be one of the lessons that has influenced me the most. His words of wisdom have inspired me to make two of my own. Number one being that this life is not about what you take when you leave it behind you, but it's about what you leave behind you when you go. The second lesson I've learned is that many of us don't quite understand how fast the earth and life are really moving. I believe that days come slow and years go fast, and that every breath is a gift, starting from the first one to the very last. The main message of this is that you can't blink because life will always go faster than you think. 